The mid-2000s marked the rise of video sharing and streaming due to improved internet speeds at lower costs. However, as the internet got more and more accessible, so did digital piracy. Theatrical films will usually get pirated a couple of months after being released. You could find a digital copy quicker, but only if you're willing to settle for a recorded version of subpar quality complete with audience laughter. So obviously most of the revenue is made immediately after launch. It's an entirely different story with streaming services. Movies and TV shows get ripped just hours after being aired online. The revenue here depends on a small but continuous fee for access to the entire library. Trying to watch pirated content, however, is not as easy as it sounds. Downloading torrent files can result in warning letters which are more severe in some countries than others. Plus, the added risk of viruses, dependence on other seeders, and lack of previewing makes it inconvenient to say the least. Not for Kanye West, though. Illegal streaming websites aren't any better. They can get blocked by ISPs, download malicious files to your device, and many simply don't work. The ones that do are often plagued with annoying pop-ups, fake video players surrounding the real one, and even more ads wherever there's space left. Video quality will mostly be average, and you won't find support for subtitles or anything else. Why bother going through all that hassle when you can get every movie, TV show, anime you ever wanted from the comfort of a single click on an online platform? In a massive shift from their movie rental business model, Netflix introduced Video On Demand and started acquiring rights for popular studios like Warner Brothers and Universal Pictures. Having almost complete monopoly meant you could watch a variety of content for just $7.99 a month. Bonus points for family members. This was what Netflix hoped would counter the rise of piracy. And it worked. For a while, at least. Between 2011 and 2015, piracy had reduced by 50% in North America. But a complete monopoly rarely lasts. Soon a plethora of companies launched their own subscription plans. HBO launched HBO Go and HBO Now. Amazon had Amazon Unbox, which got renamed to Amazon Video On Demand, and then to Amazon Instant Video, shortened to Amazon Video, and finally Prime Video. Hulu, Sling TV, Fubo TV, PlayStation View, Showtime, all fought for a piece of the pie, some more successful than others. But how do these services compete for the upper hand? One way is exclusively licensing content from distributors. Netflix paid $100 million to retain exclusive rights for the show Friends, and that's just for 2019. TV studios are the real winners here, and consumers, the losers, since the push for content aggregation at this point has definitely been replaced with a lot more segregation. Another way to increase subscribers is by producing original content, which is mostly TV shows. Here's the winning formula. Study existing user data to identify the demand. Develop a new series based on what everyone wants. Plan for multiple seasons. Start production. Advertise well enough, and you've possibly created a successful franchise that lasts many years. A new fan base will ensure high ratings on IMDb. Start buying official merchandise. Someone will create a subreddit to discuss all the fan theories, all while doing the most important thing you'd want. Creating a brand image for the company. But subscribing to multiple services isn't ideal for everyone, especially if you can see most of your favorite movies and shows from one or two sources. This has led to an increase in piracy in the last few years. The general approach? Subscribe to a couple and pirate the rest. There have been a few creative attempts to win users. Netflix has tried something different, interactive films. Here, viewers make decisions as the protagonist throughout the movie. The plot has multiple endings as well a refreshing change from the usual linear storyline. While that hasn't stopped a five-hour compilation of all the possible scenarios from being uploaded, many would prefer to watch this one with the immersive experience. Netflix will hope that their one-month trial brings in more permanent users this way. However, the online market is set to get even more crowded soon with the launch of Disney Plus later this year, after which Disney will pull existing movies from Netflix platform. In response, the latter is expected to double their original library. All this diversity isn't helping consumers, and with an expected cost of $52 billion to the movie industry by 2020, piracy only appears to be increasing in the future. Unless, of course, someone comes up with a combined subscription of all the other subscriptions. Sounds familiar? Subscribing to this channel, however, is completely free, and with a lot of interesting content planned soon, you really should stick with us.